Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I will recap one of a thriller films from 2016, titled Better Watch Out. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film begins in a snowy neighborhood with a festive atmosphere of Christmas, that is celebrated by all of the families. But a woman named Ashley does not seem to share the holiday spirits, for she cannot spend this Christmas with her family. Ashley, is instead on her way to the home of family who's asked her to babysit their 12-year-old son, Luke, who just had his wet dream for the first time. Luke shared his experience with his friend, Garrett, who had experienced the same thing. Luke has romantic feelings for Ashley, and he tells his best friend that he is going to make out with her tonight. Garrett, however, thinks that Luke is too young for Ashley, but Luke is determined to work out his plan. Not long after, Ashley arrives, and is greeted by Luke's parents who are about ready to leave for Christmas party. It is revealed that Ashley has been babysitting Luke for quite some time, since he was just 8 years old, which explains why the parents trust her to handle the now brattier preteen Luke. Luke's mom tells Ashley that Luke has started sleepwalking again, so Ashley will have to keep a pencil on his door handle to know if he is in his bedroom at night. When Luke's parents and Garrett leave, Ashley talks to her boyfriend, Ricky, who insists on meeting her but she refuses. Ricky, of course I wanted to see you. However, as time goes, it appears that Luke is eager to show her that he is no longer a boy. He starts pulling off harmless stunts to showcase his courage and maturity, and is keen on impressing her. It's that, give it to me. Lucas, stop! Lucas, I'm so serious right now. While she goes to drain the champagne bottle in the kitchen, she finds the backyard door open and shuts it. She receives a call from Ricky again and hangs up, because of an argument between the two that irritates her. Even though Luke knows that her boyfriend keeps calling for her, but it doesn't deter him from trying to seduce her. Ashley then receives a call on the telephone in the kitchen but no one answers, and goes to watch a horror movie with Luke. Luke tells her that she shouldn't be dating a guy like Ricky but Ashley shuts him up saying that Luke is kiddo. She then says that she forgot to order the pizza but just then they hear the doorbell and find a pizza delivery boy. Ashley tells the delivery boy that she hasn't ordered the pizza, but Luke says that it might be his father who ordered so he takes the pizza. They end up eating the pizza and watching a horror film together. Luke keeps trying to make a move on her, even goes as far as inappropriately placing a hand on her thigh, which she brushes off, and leans on her shoulder. He is interrupted when Ashley gets a phone call and answers it. Yeah, I don't know, I said we'll see. She returns to sit next to him after the phone call, and they watch the movie a little bit more, until Luke suddenly moves to kiss her forcefully, putting her off and scaring her. As a result, Ashley gets up blatantly refusing his advances now. Ashley gets a call from a man who tells her that he can watch her, so she goes to the backyard window but sees no one there. She then discovers that the back door is open, and quickly asks Luke to pass her phone to her, but he accidentally drops it in the fish tank. But I, I'm not scared. No one's there. See? Scared. The intruder reveals himself to be Garrett, who had planned to pull a prank on Ashley by scaring her. Then all of the sudden a commotion can be heard from upstairs. Ashley takes the kitchen knife and climbs upstairs to investigate, followed by the two boys. Jesus, what are you doing? Stay down. They find that someone has broken the window on the second floor by throwing a brick at it. Ashley tries to use the landline to make a call, and is surprised to find that there is no reception. The three of them find out that they're no longer able to access the internet, nor call anyone with a landline. They plan to escape with Ashley's car, but finds that somebody has slashed her tire with a knife. Garrett then returns downstairs to reveal that there is a writing on the brick, that says that they mustn't leave the house, or they'll die. Garrett, however, becomes panicked and doesn't heed the warning and makes a dash to the front yard, where an unrevealed figure shoots him. What happened to Garrett? Shh. Uh. We're gonna get through this, okay? Scared, Ashley and Luke move to hide from the intruder. What 
really want. They decide to hide in the attic, avoiding a mysterious figure who has now made their way inside the house. Luckily, the intruder is unaware of their presence in the attic, so he walks out of the room. Ashley is then freaked out by a spider and is about to fall off the attic, but Luke saves her. After that, they step down from there, and Luke goes to retrieve a gun stashed in his parents' bedroom. He then takes Ashley to another room, even though the intruder is still roaming around the house. Okay, go, go, go. Luke, going out there's not brave page. The intruder steps in the room, and not long after Ashley recognizes that the intruder's mask belongs to Luke. So she forces the intruder to take his mask off, revealing that he is Garrett. As a result, Ashley becomes very angry when she learns that Luke wanted to seduce her, by scaring her and staging a rescue. Now furious since his plan was foiled, Luke slapped Ashley so hard that she fell down the stairs, knocking her out. As Ashley wakes up, she realizes that she has been tied to a chair with her mouth taped shut, while Luke and Garrett casually move around the house. Luke confesses his love for Ashley despite their five years age difference. The two boys then force her to play in a game of truth or dare, in which he demands to know whether Ashley has had sex with other men, and Garrett challenges Luke to grope her breast. Right or left? Garrett and Luke then get into an argument, with Garrett telling Luke that Luke should challenge Garrett to touch Ashley which Luke refuses to do. When Ashley is left alone in the room, she finds a flashlight, grabs it, and shines it at the window, sending Morse codes for help. However, she gets caught when Luke and Garrett return, and the flashlight is taken away. Luke then forces her to consume a drink, that will make her forget everything when she wakes up the next day, but she hits the bottle and it gets broken. All of the sudden, the doorbell rings, and Ashley tries to scream for help but is stopped by them. He plays loud music on the tape, and finds that it is Ricky on the door, who tells him that he has come to see Ashley after receiving a text from her. Luke tells Ricky that Ashley is annoyed with Ricky, and doesn't want to see him anymore. Ricky decides to leave but he asks Luke to give her the flower bouquet he has brought. But when Luke opens the door to take the bouquet, Ricky gets inside the house forcefully. In the other room, Ashley knocks herself to the floor and secretly takes a glass shard. Luke tells Ricky that Ashley is upstairs because of suffering from a period cramp. As Ricky heads upstairs and searches for her, Luke grabs a baseball bat from his bedroom and knocks him out. The two end up brawling on the floor. Garrett then walks in on them with a shotgun in his hands. Get on your knees. Please. Okay, okay. Hi. Luke takes the opportunity to knock Ricky out. Ricky is now tied up to another chair next to Ashley, and at this point it is revealed that it was Luke who texted Ricky from Ashley's phone. Garrett did not know that this was also part of Luke's plan, so he argues with Luke who somehow calms him down and settles things with him. After that, Luke forces Ashley to call her boyfriend, Jeremy, and ask him to come over but she doesn't listen to him, so Luke calls him himself. At the same time, Ashley takes this opportunity to begin breaking herself free from the chair using a glass shard. Ricky deliberately pees himself to divert Luke's attention, who cleans the floor and goes outside to throw the wipe. While he is away, Ashley unties one of her feet and later unties another foot. Unfortunately, things just get worse for Ricky, as Luke and Garrett drag him away from the room. Luke is palpably jealous, not sitting well with the fact that there is another man in Ashley's life. As a result, Luke comes up with a sick idea to harm Ricky, while in the other room, Ashley manages to fully break free from her binds. She goes to the foyer, holding a gun and threatening Luke to not hurt Ricky. But then Luke flings down the brand new can of paint he's holding, bashing Ricky's skull and killing him. Ashley and Garrett now stand there astounded, gasping at the horrific sight. She then pulls the trigger, but as it turns out, the pistol isn't loaded all along. She then makes a dash out of the house. But her effort is futile as Luke manages to drag her back inside once more. He ties her up again with Christmas lights, 
and gleefully steps out to the porch to greet the carolers outside. Garrett, however, is visibly shaken and petulant due to Ricky's death. Jeremy the ex later arrives at the front door, and Luke warmly greets him. Luke proceeds to tells Jeremy that Ashley wants an apology letter from him before he could meet her. Unbeknownst to Jeremy, Luke has hatched an elaborate plan to kill him. This boy manages to slip a rope around Jeremy's neck and begins pulling, suspending Jeremy in the air and effectively hanging him on the tree, killing him. Inside, Garrett has now changed his mind after Ashley makes him realize that Luke is not a good friend, and he only uses and manipulates Garrett for his benefit. But unfortunately for him, when he attempts to release her, he gives her a peck which frustrates Luke and he shoots Garrett for touching Ashley. He shouts at Garrett telling him that he has forced Luke to shoot him. You shot me! Look what you made me do! Luke finally shoots a finishing blow, killing him as well. After witnessing everything that has occurred, Ashley has now lost hope. Luke tells her about how his mother used to care for him and love him, but then she stopped and he's not sure why. Ashley claims to know why, but she remains silent and does not respond. Frustrated, Luke finishes her off with a knife. Good night. With no one else left alive, Luke joyfully begins moving around the house, staging the bodies and creating a fake crime scene. Finally, he goes to bed and remembers to keep the pencil on his door handle. Failing at keeping the pencil on the door handle, he decides to enter his room from the window. Later, when the parents finally arrive, Luke pretends to be asleep in his bed, supposedly unaware of all the violence that happened around the house. Her mother holds him and the police as well as the medics are called to the scene. At this point, we can see that Luke is satisfied of his success. But it doesn't end there, as a medic shouts that there is someone left alive. This someone, is none other than Ashley herself. Luke looks through the window, mortified, as Ashley is hoisted up into an ambulance. She notices Luke in his room staring at her and flicks him off. Before the film ends, Luke gets afraid that Ashley will disclose everything to the police. He tells his mother that he is very worried about Ashley, and wants to visit her at the hospital. Okay guys. That's all the recap for Better Watch Out 2016. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.